Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gina. In this video, we are going to derive the kinematic equations for constant acceleration. For a motion under constant acceleration, then on the acceleration graph, you'll get a horizontal line. And by the definition of acceleration, which is the change in velocity with time, delta v over delta t, or if you have taken calculus, acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. And the change in velocity would be the area under curve on the acceleration graph. And suppose the acceleration here has magnitude a, and the change in time is delta v. So delta v would be the constant acceleration times delta t. And delta v is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So from here, we get the first kinematic equation, final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times delta t. Now let's translate this acceleration graph on the velocity graph. So since the instantaneous acceleration is the slope of the tangent line on the velocity graph, so when you have a constant acceleration, then the velocity will increase linearly. And since the velocity is the derivative of the displacement, so delta x would be the area under curve on the velocity graph. To find this area, we can divide the area into two smaller areas. The first one would be the rectangle underneath. And the second one would be the triangle above the dashed line. So suppose the initial velocity is vi, and the time is delta t. So delta x would be the sum of the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle. The area of the rectangle is the base times the height. The height is the initial velocity, and the base is delta t, plus the area of the triangle. The height of the triangle is delta v. And from above, we found that change in velocity equals to acceleration times delta t. And the base of the triangle is still delta t. And the area of a triangle is half times the base times the height. So this area will be half times acceleration times delta t squared. And a quick note, delta x also equals to the final position minus the initial position. And that is our second kinematic equation. Delta x equals initial velocity times delta t plus half times acceleration times delta t squared. Now to derive for the third and the fourth kinematic equation, we are going to take equation 1 and isolate for delta t and isolate for the acceleration and then substitute them separately into equation 2. So delta t from equation 1 equals to final velocity minus initial velocity over the acceleration. And if we isolate for the acceleration, we get acceleration equals to the final velocity minus initial velocity over delta t. Now let's substitute them into equation 2 separately. Let's start with delta t. So let's substitute delta t, which is the final velocity minus initial velocity over the acceleration, 
into equation 2. Then we get delta x equals initial velocity times delta t, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over the acceleration, plus half times acceleration times delta t squared. That is final velocity minus initial velocity over acceleration squared. Next, let's multiply on both sides by acceleration. So this equation becomes acceleration times delta x equals initial velocity times final velocity minus initial velocity plus half times final velocity minus initial velocity squared. Let's expand the right hand side. This equals to initial velocity times final velocity minus initial velocity squared plus half times final velocity squared minus 2 times initial velocity times final velocity plus initial velocity squared. This term can cancel out with this term. So we'll be left with negative half of initial velocity squared plus half of final velocity squared. And from here, we get the third kinematic equation. Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times delta x. And to get the fourth kinematic equation, we are going to substitute the acceleration, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over delta t, into the second equation. And we get delta x equals initial velocity times delta t plus half times acceleration, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over delta t, then times delta t squared. Let's expand the right hand side. Initial velocity times delta t plus half of final velocity times delta t and minus half of initial velocity times delta t which equals to half of the initial velocity times delta t plus half of the final velocity times delta t. So here we get the fourth kinematic equation. Delta x equals half of initial velocity plus final velocity times delta t. And that is the end of the video. In this video, we just derived four kinematic equations for motion under constant acceleration. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.